Hello guys, welcome to Stealth Security. In today's video, we are going to look at Nmap. Nmap is probably one of the first tools that you will learn in your journey as a penetration tester. Nmap is a very powerful scanner that can scan servers and give us information like open ports, services, operating systems, and many other information. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at what Nmap is in detail, and we will also look at a couple of examples where we actually scan a server and get information about that server. Let's get started. Before we start working with Nmap, we need to understand what ports and protocols are. Ports are channels used by applications to communicate with the internet. Computers can either open ports to listen for incoming connections or to send data to an external connection. A great example is port 80 used by web applications. For example, if you're browsing a website, you'll usually be using the port 80 or if it is HTTPS enabled, you'll be using the port 443. There are around 65,000 ports in every computer. And some of these ports are reserved for a specific set of services. And these can include FTP, SSH, and many others. These are called as protocols. For example, FTP is a protocol. A protocol is just a set of rules for communication. For example, if you want to build an app that has to communicate with an FTP server, you'll be using the FTP protocol. So if you look at a computer system, it's basically a combination of services that are communicating via ports. This is what Nmap helps us to find. Using Nmap, we can scan a server and we can find the open ports. Nmap will tell us what service is using a specific port. This might not always be accurate, but Nmap comes up with pretty solid results. I hope you understand what ports and protocols are. Now let's look at how to install and start working with Nmap. If you're using Ubuntu or any Debian based operating systems, you can use apt to install Nmap. If you're using a Mac, you can use Homebrew. I've already installed Nmap, so I'm not going to do it again. Once you have installed Nmap, you can check the installation by using the help command. You can see a lot of help options provided by Nmap and this can also be a great reference when you're working with Nmap. Great, now let's start scanning using Nmap. And for all the examples, we'll be using the URL scanme.nmap.org. We are using this because Nmap provides this server for us to learn how to scan with Nmap. So we have permission to work with this. Let's start with the first scan. The first scan that we'll be performing is also the default scan. So we provide Nmap the URL. Now Nmap will start scanning the site and let's see what Nmap comes up with. Great. Nmap has finished scanning and you can see that it has discovered four ports. The first is 22, which is an SSH port, then port 53, then 80, which is, which is an HTTP port, which means there is uh, a website running on that port. And Nmap has also discovered two other ports, which is 9929 and 31337. You can also see that Nmap says the state of the port. So the state is nothing but Nmap telling us whether a port is open, closed or filtered. So the difference is simple. If a port is open, Nmap knows for sure that the port is open. If a port is closed, Nmap knows it's closed. If it's filtered, Nmap cannot accurately determine whether that port is open or closed. This is usually because that port is protected by a firewall or there can be many other reasons, but there are other flags which we can use with Nmap in order to find more information about a specific port. We won't be covering that in this lesson. We'll look at it in a future lesson, but for now, just understand that there are three port states, open, closed, and filtered. So this is the usual output for most of the scans, unless we are asking for very specific information from Nmap. Now let's perform another scan where we will try and see if we can find the versions of these services. For this scan, we'll be using the SV flag, which means scan for versions. And now let's give the domain
This scan might take a little longer because Nmap has to verify what service the port is running. Great, Nmap has finished scanning and now you can see that Nmap has figured out that SSH is running OpenSSH version 6.6.1. So this information is very valuable because this is how we usually see if there are vulnerabilities. For example, we can search the internet for OpenSSH version 6.6.1 and see if there are any existing vulnerabilities that we can use to attack the system. We can also see that uh, HTTP is running using Apache HTTPD 2.4.7 and we can also see that Nmap has discovered that this server is running on Linux. If you just want to scan for operating systems, you can even use the O flag, which Nmap can use to find out which operating system the server is running on. So these are very valuable information when you are a penetration tester because this is how you usually start out in a pen testing audit. You first scan the servers, see all the open ports and services and see if there are any existing vulnerabilities. So this is why you should always keep your operating system and services updated. Now let's see how to save the scan outputs. Usually when you're scanning a server, it takes a while. Since we are performing just a default scan, it was quickly done. But if you are scanning a server, you'll usually be looking for thousands of ports. And that can take a long time. So it's always better to have an option to save the scan output. There are multiple flags with which you can save outputs. For example, you can use the OX flag in order to save the output as XML. You can use the ON flag to save the output as normal text. There is another option called OA, which you can use to save the scan output in all the formats. Let's try that. We will now perform our default scan and use the OA flag to save the scan output. Nmap throws an error because I did not provide a file name. So let's try that again. We can see that the scan is now finished. We can also see that there are three files. The first one is output.gnmap, which is the greppable output. This is now deprecated, so you don't have to worry about it. The second file is with .nmap extension. This is the file with the normal output. Let's see what it is. Yeah, the same scan result is saved into this file. Now we can see there is another output file called output.xml and you can see that this file will have the scan output in an XML format. This XML format is particularly useful because this output can be used with other tools like Nessus or any other automated scanning tools and you can use this output file in order to feed the result into those software. So the XML output is very useful when you're working with Nmap. Finally, let's look at Nmap scripts. Nmap has a bunch of scripts which Nmap uses in order to automatically scan the server and see if there are any open vulnerabilities. Nmap is not as powerful as exploitation tools like Metasploit, but Nmap can run some basic commands and some basic scripts and uh, see if there are any open vulnerabilities which we can make use of. If a server is really weak, you can use Nmap scripts to probably hack it. To run a script, we'll be using the script flag. Let's try that. We'll be running the default script, which will perform some default scanning and uh, give us some information. Let's see what comes up. Also, script scanning can take a while, so we might have to wait a few minutes. Great, the script is complete. We can see that Nmap has come up with much more information for example, the SSH host key. And it has also collected information about the HTTP port. And you can see that uh, the favicon and it has also grabbed the title. This is just the default script and there are tons of scripts that you can use with Nmap to find some of the common vulnerabilities in servers. What we saw is just an introduction to Nmap. Nmap is an amazing tool that comes with a lot of flexible options. I'll add a link to the Nmap website and documentation in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any specific topics that you would like us to cover, please let us know in the comments. You can also tell us any feedback or criticisms or whatever you have and 
we'll try and improve that in our future videos thank you for watching see you soon with another topic